Hello friends, Bolt Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at Power of the Primes Cutthroat, specifically Deluxe Class Terracon Cutthroat. I picked this figure up over at Robot Kingdom, and it should be available, or the figure should be available at your favorite internet or domestic internet supplier anytime now. The figure is, well, it's kind of a rehash of Powers of the Primes Swoop. It has a very similar feel to it, very similar transformation in some parts, and overall just, it's really, really close to being that, that swoop figure. It is well detailed in creature mode, but you can obviously see all of the wonderful goodness that are, is the robot parts. The wings are multi-faceted, multi-jointed, I should say, and the overall aesthetic works incredibly well for the original G1 Cutthroat. I'm very smitten with this figure, except for one major, major issue, and that has to do with the head. I'm not sure who designed the figure, but there is an actual incredibly bad design problem going on here. The pegs that hold the head on, or specifically the beast head, to the rest of the body are very small, so it just pops off. You could just very, very easily pop the monster head off. And the pegs, as you can see, are very small. If they were, I don't know, maybe two millimeters longer, I don't think this would be a problem. Also, the components within the head, the beak and the crest here, have the same problem. The pegs on, or holding everything in, are just too short. Personally, I think this might have been a cost savings thing that Hasbro did, and it's kind of biting them in the beak, so to speak. There's not a ton of posability to be had in the beast mode. Legs move forward and back, and then there are the, well, shins or knees. The wings are posable just as much as swoops are. They could flap all the way up. They move all the way down till they're flush against the back. They have forward and back movement and in and out movement, same as swoops. The figure is just so poorly weighted based on the design that it's hard to get any decent poses. I would have loved to have been able to get a pose where he's like standing on somebody trying to eat them, but it just looks stupid. If you have transformed Power of the Prime's Deluxe Class Swoop, then you've transformed Cutthroat pretty much. It's virtually the same transformation. So we're going to just fold the wings back. I just like to do that to get them out of the way. Take the tail, fold that up all the way, Grab the sides of the bottom of the beast mode and fold them out, and then flip them down to form the legs. And the biggest problem I have with transforming him is that specifically on the figure's left leg, the peg for the combined mode gets in the way, and you just end up kind of twisting it in bad ways and running the risk of breaking it. Then take the bottom legs, fold them all the way up, and then fold them back a bit to give the figure some extra heels. You don't have to do that, but there's nowhere for the legs to peg into, and I think it looks best like that. And then we could just stand the figure up and fiddle with the loose hips. And yes, I said, and yes, I said loose hips. This figure has some loose hips. Nothing a little floor polish won't fix. Then grab what will be the robot arms, unpeg them from the hips, Turn them 90 degrees so that they are the elbow or the inside of the elbows are facing forward, and then flip out the fists by getting your fingernail in the front of the fist and flipping it out from the forearms. Carefully grab the beast head and fold it down in front of the figure. If you do it too hard or too fast, you will pop the head off. Just fair warning. Then we can flip the wings back out and fold them straight down, and we have the robot mode. I think the robot mode looks absolutely fantastic. However, that beast head is just a smidge too long because it just gets in the way of the, of the robot head, especially if you're looking at it from the front on. You can see how high it rests on the figure's chest. And no, you can't push it down any farther. I've tried. The overall aesthetic is quite good, and the coloring is perfect. The purple, the green, and the yellow or orange the very very lightish orangish yellow work incredibly well also hasbro has given it wonderful highlighting on the knees on the shins and on the chest it is quite it is quite frankly a perfect rendition of cutthroat straight down to the perfect head sculpt 
I always thought that Cutthroat had kind of a skull motif going or a sunken in face motif going, especially when you look at the figure in the original Generation 1 comics and the original Generation 1 show and artwork. And Hasbro nailed that look to a T. The only issue that I have with the head or the head sculpt in general is the very large seam line from where the pieces are combined. Eh, oh well, not that big a deal. I, I can just deal with it. Something that I absolutely love is they gave him his original Generation 1 gun, and it is painted the same color or the same purple that is all over the figure. I love this touch, and they managed to do this with each of the Terracons. Thank you, Hasbro, for doing that. I appreciate it. Cutthroat can wear its prime armor on its chest. It pegs into either side of the monster mode, but I've discovered if it gets too heavy, the monster head falls right off. Cutthroat's posability is exactly the same as Swoop. Head is on a swivel, ball joint in the shoulder, swivel just above the shoulder joint, 90 degree bend at the elbow, torso, swivels back and forth for limb mode, can f figure can kick forward, figure can kick forward that much, though the styling of the hip joint or the hip piece makes it very difficult to actually kick forward because of the way it's shaped. It constantly hits the armor that is the side skirt. Can kick out that much, thigh swivel, over 90 degree bend at the knee, no toe articulation. Overall, Cutthroat is a fantastic rendition of the character. I love this figure, except for the issue with the head. The monster head is a real bummer. Not much I can do about it. You just have to be very careful when using the figure or fiddling around the figure because it will fly off very easily. Overall, Cutthroat is 100% worth picking up, especially if you want to form Abominus with the rest of the Terracons. Now, the Terracons have always been my favorite of the Gen 2 combiners. And what I mean by Gen 2 is the second wave of combiners. It was just so different. Everything transformed into, or all the figures transformed into monsters. I thought it was, I always thought it was an awesome contrast to the Technobots. And the Technobots were my other favorite as a kid. Unfortunately, I never had either growing up. So I'm really happy that Hasbro decided to give us the Terracons along with the, with Computron and the, and the, and the Technobots. Again, this figure is totally worth picking up. Just be wary of the monster head. Everybody, thank you so much for watching this video review. Please let me know what you think of the figure down in the comments. Hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so that you know when a new video is coming. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Balt Matrix, and I will catch you next time.